Further down St. John's Chapel, you'll see a magnificent tomb flanked by an American and a French flag with a rather young man standing boldly on the back of an eagle's shoulders. Before the Americans entered World War I, there was a young man who had a law practice in Chicago. He was a graduate of Harvard Law. His name was Norman Prince. He was a very rich, affluent youth who came from a very affluent family. His parents gave all of St. John's Chapel in his honor. He had his own biplane, which back then was a very rare thing indeed. You see the goggles and cap in his left hand. And simply because he could, and realizing that the French could use some help fighting the Germans, he dropped his law practice and he went to France to fly for France. He was our first fighter pilot, and he was a volunteer. Let that one settle in for a while. That would be like you or me grabbing an F-22 and flying to Afghanistan or Syria or elsewhere, assuming we could get away with it. Several other people followed his example, those able to fly with their own aircraft and some with not their own aircraft. But they started a group which later became known as the Lafayette Escadrille. That is probably a more familiar term to you than Norman Prince. The Escadrille eventually became embedded within the Foreign Legion. But what's remarkable about this young man's achievements, not just because he had the volunteer heart of a great American, his leaving the States for France led to the establishment of a blueprint and a footprint, which eventually became the Army Air Corps which of course now is known as the Air Force and the Army, or the Army and the Air Force. This single person allowed all that to happen simply because he saw somebody who needed his help and realized he could provide it. He died at a very young age, four days shy of his 31st birthday. He had um, forgotten his corrective goggles one day on a very routine flight. His plane crashed because he could not judge the distance to the ground. He broke both of his legs which healed, but later died of a cerebral hemorrhage. His parents had his funeral in Paris. They put his casket in an open field. It was flooded and surrounded and covered and buried with the petals of countless flowers by aviators from all over that part of Europe. He was awarded every honor that France could honor or award. And people who visit the cathedral, especially from France, find this a particularly moving spot. We hope you do too. Because if it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have the armed services as we now have it. And remember, he was a young kid, and he loved his country, and he also believed in the rights of those who thought and flew with the same freedoms that we do now. <laughs>